On this episode of Top Guns, three exceptional weapons carried by the military and law enforcement throughout the world. From the FN 5.7, a pistol with punch firing a special ammunition that can penetrate most military body armor. To the Mossberg 500 chainsaw shotgun, a high tech battering ram blasting through locked doors. To the FN FS 2000 rifle, a tactical weapon that can be tailored for any combat situation. Throughout history, weapons, both primitive and modern, have been essential for survival. Used on the field of battle, for hunting, law enforcement, and personal protection. As technology advances, rifles, shotguns, and pistols are continually improved to be more precise and effective. On every episode of Top Guns, experts and marksmen will delve into the history, mechanics, and design of these weapons. After being field tested, they will be featured in a shoot-off to determine which weapons truly are the Top Guns. On this episode, we're looking at three special tactical weapons, and we've got the perfect expert here to help. Jeff Gonzalez. Colby, hey. how you doing, man? Good. Jeff Gonzalez joined the Navy after high school and was accepted into the Special Forces team. After 12 years of distinguished service as a Navy SEAL, Jeff went on to create Trident Concepts, a company specializing in weapons, tactics, and demolition training. Well, what'd you bring for us to play with today? I have an FS-2000 from FN. Very uh, strange looking weapon. Yeah, it is, it is. It's a fun weapon, I think you'll enjoy it. Well, that, that looks like a little bit of fun. What else you got? Well, I have got a Mossberg 500. Chainsaw. The chainsaw shotgun, okay. And then we've got the FN 5.7 pistol. Let's start with the FN 5.7. Good one. Tell me about this pistol. This is basically a rifle cartridge in a pistol platform. So it fires a 5.7 millimeter round that is a very flat flying round, very low recoil. When NATO needed to upgrade its weapon systems in the late 80s, it turned to weapons designer Fabrique Nationale in Belgium. They designed a lightweight semi-automatic pistol with a 20-round detachable magazine, the FN 5.7. This high-tech weapon actually takes its name from the ammunition that it fires. The 5.7 millimeter by 28 millimeter cartridge was specifically designed for NATO troops. The FN 5.7 is used by military and police forces in over 40 countries around the world. It's light. I know. I mean, this thing <laughs> is featherweight. Is it it's pretty much all polymer, isn't it? It is. You've got a few parts like the barrel, some springs, and pins that are going to be metal, and everything other than that is polymer. Yeah. Have a feel of that trigger. Tell me what you think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that trigger combined with that round really gives you a greater distance and more precision. Well, yeah, because normally your handguns are limited not by the gun itself, but by the cartridge. Absolutely. You know? And this, with that 5.7 round, you know, that changes things. It does, for big sure. time. All right, Jeff, let's bring in today's shooter. Every week, we invite a marksman to the range to test the weapons, give us a practical perspective on these firearms. This week, it's Jermaine Finks. Jermaine's passion for shooting developed in high school when he participated in archery. He joined the Army at 17 and trained to be a military policeman. After serving for 15 years, including tours in Kuwait and Iraq, he went on to become a state constable. He currently works as a federal agent and firearms instructor for the Department of Homeland Security. Jermaine, Jeff Gonzalez. Hey, Jermaine. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Good to meet you. Good to see you again, Mr. Fink. Good to see you too, Colby. Welcome to the party. Recognize any of these three? Yes, I do, actually. Which ones? That one right there. The FN 57. Huh? Yes, sir. Well, today is going to be fun, Jermaine. This is how it works. I want you to do a field test on all three of these weapons. Give me your feedback. And then at the end of all this, the three of us are going to have a little showdown. Nice. It's going to be fun. So 
Use your practice time wisely. Start with the FN57. I'll tag up with you guys in a bit. All Thank right. You. So have you uh, had any opportunity to play with this thing? Yeah, we actually had it in our With the FN 5.7, specific experience only goes back to a firearms instructor training course that I took. I remember it being one of those light weapons and very uh, fun to shoot. You know, one of the things that I found unique about this weapon system was the location of the safety. Ah. It's kind of, again, up here where, you know, my trigger finger might rest. Aside from that, all the other controls are pretty much the same. Pretty familiar. Yeah, slide stops in the same spot, magazine release is in the same spot. And then it has uh, these adjustable sights that uh, we will verify whether or not they are actually dialed in. Uh, yeah, the wind is in elevation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. On a 10-yard target, pretty much, it was pretty simple. Going back to the fundamentals, you know, sight alignment, sight picture, trigger press. In the very beginning, I sighted it in like I do with my own personal duty weapon. And that was basically giving me a, a shock group that was just a little bit high. Nice. It's like shooting a 22 almost. I know, isn't it? That recoil is really sweet. We had some pretty significant gusts of wind going at that time, and it's kind of hard not to see those flags moving the way they were moving. I'm wondering if the wind is already affecting this bullet at this range. I think I... at this range, probably slightly, if, if anything, though, probably. Well, Let's uh, let's just make a little correction here and see what that yeah, does. Slide to the to the left a little bit. Yeah. Let's try that. See what that does. All right, get her set back up here. That's there. You know, again, I'm still fascinated by this smaller round that it shoots here. It's a high velocity round, so it's moving very fast, got a very flat trajectory. I felt that this round had the capability of going beyond what a normal pistol caliber round could do. So I was very curious to see uh, what we could do with this particular weapon system. We decided that we wanted to look at what it would do penetration wise. Let's go for some water. We got five jugs. With the water jugs, it was kind of an experiment to see with the penetration, how deep we could actually get it to go through as many water jugs as we possibly could. But we also knew the factor of density. How many jugs do you think that projectile is going to penetrate? I'm guessing about maybe three. Three. The armor-piercing 5.7 round is restricted to military usage. Jeff and Jermaine are using a scaled-down practice round. Huh. Can't tell how many it got. I think it might have penetrated into the second. Well, well, first he definitely one. got one. Huh? It's like two. Broke through. Yeah. Did it go into three? Oh, look at that. We kind of uh, we lost it. Looks like its trajectory might have been a little bit. Let's see where it impacted on this guy. Yeah. Wow, that tore that thing up. That's huge. <laughs> nice little hole in the front. There it is. Big old. And that's usually with the damage that it will do. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it might have come out a little high and just split almost like ah, a seam. Hitting on that little arm. Exactly. Just and then there. And then it came out and it missed the rest of these. Just so just missed. You know, you might have been right with a third jug. We were both thinking that because of the round that it is, it wasn't the, the full effect of what we possibly get out of this weapon today. All right, so we saw the limits of that. Yeah. So now what we got going on? All right, so check it out. You're going to like this. Uh -oh. We've got some canisters of pressurized goo. Pressurized goo. OK. So under pressure, we'll see what happens with all this uh, goo. Right, so who's please. going first, you or me? I can go first. Knock it out. All Show right. me how it's done. Here we go. All right, let's see what happens. Ooh, <laughs> pressurized goo, huh? <laughs> let's try another way. Center hit. There we go. <laughs> Outstanding. Nice. Got a little spinner on that one. With the FN 5.7, uh, getting it back in my hands today, it, it brought back some memories as far as the differences of the weapon compared to other pistols. I remember it being one of those light weapons and very uh, fun to shoot. 
and carries a lot of rounds. The trigger press on the weapon was pretty light. I got to say, contributing as far as getting back on target for recoil management, and reset and prep, things like that, it was very good. This weapon is definitely a contention for a Top Gun, yeah. As Top Guns continues, we've already looked at the FN 5.7 pistol. Next up is the Mossberg 500 chainsaw shotgun. But first, a Top Gun's bullet point. The term caliber refers to the internal diameter of a gun barrel. Bullets are often named using this same measurement. The gun's bore can be measured in inches or millimeters. For example, a 22 caliber bullet would fit a gun bore that is 22 hundredths of an inch. The FN 5.7 pistol fires a specially designed bullet that is 5.7 millimeter or 0.224 inches, just slightly larger than the diameter of a 22 caliber bullet. But it packs a whole lot more punch because of its bottleneck design and speed. Results are in from the FN 5.7 field test. Jermaine finds the trigger to be light, which helps in getting back on target. This weapon is definitely a contention for a Top Gun, yeah. Next Top Gun to field test, the Mossberg 500 Chainsaw Shotgun. All right, Jeff, let's move on to the Mossberg. You got it. Tell me about this bad boy. All right, well, first, it's a Mossberg 500, so it's built off the 500 design, and they've compacted it, making it more useful as a breaching tool. Yeah, exactly. Is that why the handle's up here like exactly. this? Exactly. Give you a little bit more control when that weapon system is recoiling, you know, just to keep it on that target a little bit better. Of the many firearms used in the world of special weapons and tactics, or SWAT, the Mossberg 500 Chainsaw Shotgun stands out for its unique form and reliable function. Mossberg took a pistol grip shotgun and wrapped a chainsaw handle around the forearm. The pistol grip and the chainsaw handle combined to provide amazing muzzle control. It was designed to be shot from the hip, with the chainsaw forearm loading in a fresh round after ejecting a spent shell, while the pistol grip holds the shotgun securely on target. This shotgun is a very mission-driven shotgun. This is a breaching tool, and it's got a lot of things that support that. You notice it's got a pistol grip, right. no stock. Take a look at that barrel, that flash hider on the end there. Yeah, it's all serrated right Yeah, designed to get a good purchase on the door when Jam you're jamming into the door. Exactly. You got five in the tube and one in the chamber, so it's a pretty good load out there. This is a compact shotgun. Absolutely. You know, you got it on a sling, you breach the door, throw it down, grab your AR, make your way in. That's exactly how we do it. Once the business is done with the shotgun, get it out of the way, get the rifle back in the fight. All right, Jeff, take the Mossberg down to the range, tag up with Jermaine. You guys have some fun. Put that thing to a field test. I'll catch up with you in a little bit. Will do. All right, well. What you got there? I have a Mossberg 500 chainsaw shotgun. First saw it, and I'm kind of looking at it. It's kind of small to begin with, but don't underestimate it. And then seeing the mechanism as far as the, the support handle on top instead of racking the slider underneath, you can see where they changed the weapon from being a weapon to more of a tool. Let me go over a couple things on this in case uh, you're not aware of them. All right. So you got your safety, which is a pretty simple safety. Obviously, red is fire. Here is going to be your action. So once I'm ready to go back, I'm going to go ahead and uh, depress that, and then I'll be able to open up my action. Your feeding tube, you've got the access underneath here, so just a traditional load that you've probably done before. And then if you want, you can also load from that open breech condition ah, as well. So okay. you, know, you would just drop a shell in there and then uh, send it home. And this is a breaching shotgun, so one of the things that we were going to be doing was we were going to eventually work our way up to breaching a door using the shotgun as it was intended to defeat a locking mechanism on a door. And we're going to start with a little practice session. All right, what you got here? All right, so let's start with the, the left dot first. What I want you to do is take the muzzle, and I want you to take that muzzle first, start by just coming straight in at it. Once you're in at it, I want you to go 45 degree up and 45 degree in. Got it. Once you've got that position, double check, make sure the stock is not anywhere near your face. Uh -huh. Safety. Good one. Go ahead, select fire and then crank off that shot. Good enough. Nice. All right, coming in. Yep. And then up. Mm-hmm. And then. And then over. Angle and in. There you go. Good. Making sure it's not on me. You good. All right, she's hot. 
Nice. Good job. All right, so you can kind of make out the top part of the dot. So as you were elevated and, and, and turning, it just kind of moved on you a little bit. Ah. So last little thing you want to do is make sure after you've done all that positioning, make sure it's, it's still, still there, exactly. The weapon is peculiar in, in the way it's made, but the way that it's supposed to function as a tool, I think it's pretty good. The shotgun has come a long way since the early days when soldiers loaded multiple lead balls into a gun barrel. The breech-loading shotgun was developed during the Civil War. Soldiers found them very effective for short distances. The military first issued shotguns for combat in World War I. Next came semi or fully automatic shotguns oh. for hunting or sporting clays. Today, the military uses shotguns for close quarters combat and the police for crowd control. And in the case of the Mossberg chainsaw shotgun, breaching locked doors. And it all came down to holding the weapon in a certain position each time. Not bad. Good down angle on that one. Nice. Right. Ready to do it on a real door? Let's hit it. All right, let's go get our gear on. All right, so same drill. Okay. This time, we've got a real door that we're going to work here. Well, once we move from the training section, we all move to the door. And that's where we had to be a little bit cautious, because now you're dealing with metal and things like that as far as the locking mechanism. And with this kind of a weapon being close proximity like that, we just took a little precautions as far as for any spray back coming back at us. All right. You got any questions? No, nah, just uh, walk through the steps as you want me to see it. One hot. One's hot. Nice. Very effective. Nice. Absolutely. So you can see how just push all that mechanisms right through. You can look, you know, definitely got a uh, good hit, good impact on that right there. That was excellent. It was a very clean round that went right through the locking mechanism just as it was designed to do. And, uh, you know, great job. Nice job. Thank you. Good teaching. <laughs> Thanks. This weapon is actually a tool. It wouldn't be considered a weapon in my eyes. Can it be used for a weapon secondary for self-defense? Of course. Being the tool that it is, the pistol grip actually helps you maintain recoil. And that goes into play with the actual support hand grip. But both of them together, that's a pro. It helps with recoil management. Another pro would be the bite on the front with the muzzle. Actually placing it, getting a good purchase on that door so it doesn't slip around. You really jaw into it and really get into there where you need to get to. As Top Guns continues, we're testing three specialized weapons deployed by the military and law enforcement around the world. The FN 5.7 semi-automatic pistol, the Mossberg 500 chainsaw shotgun, and the FN FS 2000 bullpup assault rifle. But first, a Top Guns bullet point. In high-risk law enforcement or military situations, such as hostage scenarios or barricaded suspects, SWAT teams are deployed. SWAT is an abbreviation for the special weapons and tactics they employ. The concept for a SWAT team began with the Los Angeles Police Department. In the late 60s, they deployed special teams with advanced weaponry to resolve difficult situations with minimal casualties. The idea proved successful, and now police and military SWAT teams are trained and utilized for critical missions all over the world. Back on the range, Army firearms instructor Jermaine Finks liked the Mossberg 500 chainsaw shotgun for breaching doors. Another pro would be the bite on the front with the muzzle. You can really jaw into it and really get into there where you need to get to. Up next, the FN FS 2000 assault rifle. OK, we have one left, Jeff. Certainly the strangest looking out of these three weapons, the FN FS 2000. Yep. What do you know about this? Well, first, it's a bullpup design. And the bullpup design, by definition, means your magazine is behind the trigger group as opposed to being in front. Exactly. Right? It allows you to just get the weapon more compact. Absolutely. 
modern warfare, soldiers need weapons that are light, compact, and yet still provide the necessary firepower. The FN 2000 assault rifle from Fabrique Nationale has a revolutionary new design and full auto capabilities. The 30 round magazines allows you to shoot till the job is done. FN released a civilian version in 2006, the semi-automatic FS 2000. The weapon may appear to be shorter, but the rifle conceals a 17 inch barrel, ideal for SWAT teams involved in close quarters combat. So you've got some accuracy and you've got some range. This thing easily would be able to hit, with that 17-inch barrel, targets out to 300 yards. I'm actually looking forward to shooting this gun. All right, there's your magazine. Thanks, sir. Take the gun, tag up with Jermaine again. Now, remember, at the end of all this, the three of us are going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. <laughs> nice. A nice, friendly little shootout, all right? Use your practice time wisely. Will do. I'll see you later. Thanks, Colby. I mean, as soon as Jeff came up walking with it and then he laid it out in front of me, it was kind of like a future weapon to me and something I've never seen or seen on TV in the movies. This is my first time actually shooting the FS-2000, so I was pretty excited, actually. So we'll start with the fresh magazine, push and pull on it, make sure it properly seats, and then I'm just going to go ahead and charge it. So then once I'm done, I can go ahead and remove the source, eject the round out, spec my chamber, and I'm good to go. All right. Sound good? My goal right off the bat with the FS-2000 was to start at the 25-yard line and to uh, get Jermaine on the uh, on the target on the paper to see what we had. All right, so you said right up in there? Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. All right. All right, Shooter, whenever you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. The trigger on the weapon, that was a little bit tricky to deal with. It wasn't your typical trigger. It was kind of awkward at first, not the, the typical thing that I usually am used to. Fabrique Nationale Herstal, located in Herstal, Belgium, has been producing firearms for more than 100 years. They began making rifles for the Belgian military in 1889. Eight years later, American gun designer John Browning joined forces with FN, and together they produced pistols, automatic rifles, and machine guns. In the 90s, FN developed a new 5.7 by 28 millimeter cartridge that has become a NATO standard. Today, Fabrique Nationale Herstal continues to develop and produce a large number of state-of-the-art firearms and ballistics products used by the military, law enforcement, and commercial shooters throughout the world. All right, she's clear. After we were done with the marksmanship part, and we decided that we wanted to look at what it would do penetration-wise. And we had a couple of different mediums, and we started with cinder blocks. All right, let's see how much damage I can do. Sounds good. You know, that was good to see, you know, to fire into that cinder block with that 5.56, just, you know, steadily chewed through them all until they were all gone. About average about two to three rounds per, right? Yeah, some, sometimes you were, you were breaking them on two, and, and then the others, they were definitely on three rounds. So nice. That was a good job. It's a real yeah, good job. Definite devastation there. Oh, yeah. After we were done with the penetration test on the cinder blocks, we decided to go into a similar test that we had done with the 5.7 pistol versus the water jets. This time we we're going to fire 5.56 versus the water jugs. So keeping with the same penetration testing, now we're going to move to water jugs. All right. Let's see, see what we get. All right, let's see if we can get to that fourth bottle. All right, looks like we're only getting to those two bottles again. And what we were expecting to see was a little bit more penetration with the rifle round. And we were surprised to see that it actually didn't. It only went through about two, dead on center. What we did see, though, as far as a difference, was the actual concussion, the damage that it does. Pistol round basically went through, whereas the rifle round went through and had a huge concussion on far, as far as the first two gallons. And it kind of proves the point again, once it enters, Concussion doesn't start until afterwards. Obviously, that 5.56 is hitting those water jugs with a tremendous amount of energy compared to that 5.7. The FS-2000, very lightweight, high-capacity round account, 
accuracy as far as comparing to an AR-15, I would say it's pretty much on par. I give that all a positive. So yeah, it held up to its uh, end of the bargain once you got used to it. The answers are in, and viewers have voted for their favorite type of weapon for home defense. So far on this episode of Top Guns, three weapons used by SWAT teams have been tested. The FN 5.7 pistol, the Mossberg chainsaw shotgun, and finally, the FS 2000 by Fabrique Nationale. Marksman Jermaine Fink summed up his experience with the FS 2000. Very lightweight, high capacity round account. Accuracy as far as comparing to an AR-15, I would say it's pretty much on par. It held up to its uh, end of the bargain once you got used to it. Now it's time for me to hit the range and review the weapons before the shoot off. All right, Jermaine, let's start with the FN 5.7 handgun. What'd you think of this thing? Lightweight, easy to manage on the recoil. Not a bad weapon, actually. Well, it is my turn to take it for a spin. Let's go. All right. The FN's an interesting handgun, one, because it's so lightweight, and having a polymer slide in addition to the polymer frame uh, just makes it an, an ultra light weapon. Uh, couple that with the 5.7 cartridge, uh, and it's a very unique handgun. Boy, this thing doesn't have hardly any reason. I know. 22. I know. That's unbelievable. I know. Especially to have such a light slide and top end, you would expect more recoil. Absolutely. I would. Nice. Is that the bullseye? It was. It's a bull. Nice one. I think, yeah, you're peppering it all around that X ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> I'm ready to compete with it. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the Mossberg. All All right. Good. The next weapon system we moved to was the Mossberg 500 chainsaw. You know, it's a very mission-driven tool. There's not a lot of things that we can do with it other than really blow a door. All right, so here's what I got for you, Colby. Yeah, yeah, door breaching with a 12-gauge shotgun is not something I do every day. So I'm going to rely on you for a little instruction today. Not a problem. All right, so what we've got is we've got these two uh, little dots here that we're going to use to simulate kind of like our, our aim point on the door. OK. So we'll give you a little couple practice shots on this thing. Uh, the key to the shotgun here, the breaching aspect, is that you're going to just start by covering that dot with the muzzle, push in, lift up, and turn to my right. Select fire, and you would launch the round through. And then what we're doing afterwards is that we're going to see the breaching round should completely eliminate that whole circle. Standing back and just watching Colby go with the Mossberg 500, he was actually having a good time. You could see he was kind of anxious to get that, get down there and make the thing go bang. You know, anyone who gets around a shotgun, you do get a little bit excited as far as the big boom that it makes. So if you slap it open, you would just take this and drop it right in there. You don't have to drop it in the tube. You would just drop it in that whole thing and then send it forward, and it actually chamber it. I got you. There you go. OK. And then let's go in straight in at first. And when you're ready. Ready? Yep. Nice. Well, I got to tell you, these serrations on this flash hider, I like those. I know. You can really dig into the wood with That's that the thing. key right there. They really take a good bite. Want to do another one? Let's try it. So I was a little lower on that one. Well, the dot's completely gone, though. That's a good sign. Let's blow that door off its hinges. Come I'll on, like, now. I'll tell you what, before we do, though, why don't we throw some uh, protective gear on? OK, right on. What's interesting is when I show up, and there are guys like Jeff and Jermaine here who have an extensive background in military, law enforcement. These guys make a living breaching doors and, and shooting guns. They don't get nearly as excited about this stuff as I do. It's old hat for them. All right, boys, let's do this. But for me, it's very new, and it's it's a daily adventure. So it's always neat to grip a new rifle or handgun and go to town with it. And angle it as far up as it'll go. There you go. Yeah, baby. Textbook. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. That boy open. God, look at the damage on the I know. Frame. It's, it did exactly what it was supposed it to do. It just disintegrates it. That was nice. Good job, man. Man. Real good job. 
Well, that's fun when you're doing it for fun. True, true. I and definitely not, enjoy it. And not in the line of business like you guys are. <laughs> but, uh, All right, the FNFS 2000. It's the only gun we have left. Let's go grab it. All right. And we saved the most advanced for last in a lot of ways, both aesthetics, ergonomics, and just overall design. So this is one that I'm going to need some practice with. Let's head no to the problem. range. With the FN2000, I mean, the bullpup design is something that I like. Uh, I'm familiar with it. All I wanted to do was get that thing down on the hay bale and start sending rounds downrange. Six o'clock outside the X-ring. Same spot. I don't know enough about the physics of that weapon to know whether it's the bullpup design or what, but just zero recoil in it. Really just a pleasure to shoot. That gun's a, a nice shoot and ride. Sometimes I think Colby doesn't give himself enough credit as far as being a marksman. And in that 25-yard target, you could see it in there. You know, he was very consistent in what he did. He got dialed in really quick on that. I was real happy about that. Oh, you got just uh, another, it's just a big cluster right there at yeah, 6 o'clock now. Yeah, real good on your shot group. Boom, same. After watching Kobe shoot that kind of a group at 25 yards, I was pretty much sure I wasn't going to be underestimating him anymore. You know what? I got to concur what you guys say. I kind of like the bullpup design. Obviously, it's a compact weapon with a full-length barrel. Right. I mean, it's got the modularity. It's got rails all over it. Recoil's non-existent. Yeah. It's not even bad at all. Yeah. We all like the 5.56 five, round. The FS2000 was just a, really just a pleasure to shoot. And I thought it was one of the most comfortable weapons to fire from a supported position that I've shot in a long time. I, I really like the FNFS2000. OK, well, surely you guys, in all your practice, have come up with some sort of friendly little competition the three of us can get into. Oh, yeah. All right, let's head back to the table where the guns are and download me on what you have in mind. Will do. OK. Yeah. As Top Guns continues, we're looking at three weapons often carried by SWAT teams. The FN 5.7 semi-automatic pistol, the Mossberg chainsaw shotgun, and the FN FS assault rifle. But before we get back to the range, a Top Guns bullet point. The term assault rifle describes a primarily military weapon noted for their semi or full auto rate of fire. They often feature a detachable magazine, an accessory rail, and other capabilities like a grenade launcher. The Germans were the first to develop modern assault rifles. In fact, the name derives from the German word Sturmgewehr, or storm rifle coined by Adolf Hitler. Now that all the weapons have been put through their paces, it's time for the shoot off. OK, gentlemen. What do you say we have a little shootout? I like it. I'm in. What do you have in mind? We're thinking about a game of horse. OK. So what we'll do is we'll set up some targets at the 10, 25, and 50. But we're only going to be using the pistol and the rifle. Yeah, eliminating the Mossberg, because we kind of know what it does. It blows doors down. That's right. That's right. OK. Each position will have various objects, but they'll always have three, one for each of us. So say you go first, you hit your target, I go second, I miss. That means I get a letter? That's right. You got it. We decided that instead of using the word force, we're going to use the word gun. G-U-N. That's gun. it. All right, I like it. All right, let's flip. Let's do this. Three coins. You each take one. We'll just flip them up, let them hit the ground. Odd man out goes first. All right, Jeff and I landed on red. Jermaine, you're blue. You're the odd man out, so that means you shoot first. All right. OK? Now. Jeff, I'm going to flip this coin. You call it in the air, and this will determine who goes second. Got it. Blue. It is blue, so you go second. Roger that. I'll be the anchor leg. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's gear up. Let's do this. That sounds good. Being the first one to go, it did give me a little bit of control, because after watching Colby, his performance, I wanted to give him a fair start, actually. I'm going to call the pistol 10 yards here, soda bottle. All right. All Get right. to it. Kind of a, a difficult target, but yeah, it was close up, and they were a pretty good, decent size. So it was basically just to see where everyone stood. Nice. Guess that means I'm up. Pressure's on. Ah. Oh, wow. The difficult part of coming into this situation is not only do I have less experience than these guys with any weapon, 
they're sitting there looking over my shoulder as I practice, so they get to pick up on my strengths and weaknesses. Whether or not that comes into play in their strategy when the game starts, who knows? Oh. Well, I guess that means I have a G. That'd be the first letter. I think it's your call this time, right? I'll tell you what, why don't we uh, take the pistol and we'll go for the 10 yard shaving creams. Copy that. All right. <laughs> and it just exploded. And I was, I was impressed. I was like, damn, that is awesome. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Oh, feeling no pressure. There you go. <laughs> Takes it out. <laughs> so it's my turn to call it. Huh? That's right. All right, I'm going to switch over to the rifle. Ooh. We'll go out to 50 yards. All right. Ooh. Yeah, let's go for the paint cans. Sounds good. Nah, I'll Jeez, switch that's... to the plates. OK. Yeah, let's plates. go for the toughest target. Oh, tough. he's going yeah. right in for the big <laughs> one. I like it. Not only did he go out to the 50-yard line, but he also picked the smaller targets. It wasn't a difficult shot, but you definitely didn't have a big margin of error. Nice, nice work. All ready to go, huh? Nice, Jermaine. Good job. Uh-oh, Gonzalez. Uh-oh, oh. are you feeling it? I pressure. feel the pressure. Are you feeling the pressure? I feel it. Good shot. Good call on that one. Nice, wow. No problem for you guys. OK, so now we go back in the rotation to you, Jermaine. All right. You know, I'm going to stick with that rifle, but we're going to be standing. What's your target? Let's go for the cantaloupes. Big fan of melons, are you? I do like some melons. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <Nice shot. laughs> wow, perfect. Got it. Yep. Huh. Did me with this trigger already? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Just got it. Barely. Barely that got it. That hit the hit, man. I'll take it. Let's go back to the pistol, and uh, let's go out to the 25, and let's let's take a shot at some of those pigeons. Play targets, 25 yards yeah. with the FN 5.7. Ah, I squeeze that off well, a little, little bit too low. soon. I was really disappointed with that, and I felt, oh, great. I'm, I'm screwed now. Colby's turn comes up. He missed. And uh, Jermaine's turn comes up, and he missed. That's a tough target. That is a tough target. <laughs> so it, it kind of was a wash in that respect. 50 yards with the FS-2000 unsupported. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> the yeah. jug. We'll go for the jug. Going for the jug. I like it. Standard. I like it. Colby, you know, he is bound and determined to get more 50-yard shots with the rifle, and he went to the jugs. Which was great. I loved it. And I took it out with the first one. Just yes, for the you record. Did. Yes, you, you got it. You got it for sure. <laughs> I don't know if I can pull up the double shot. Yeah, that, that was a part, right? That was part of it. Double shot. <laughs> 50 yards. Yeah. Nice. Good shot, Jermaine. Wow, that thing went. Thank you. Time. Thank you. Jeff may be getting a G after this. Oh. Possibly. Oh, nice you got it. Done. You got it. Oh. Barely, but it'll count. Yeah, that's it true, man. That, was a, that counts for sure. The hair on my chinny chin chin there. Jermaine, you're back up. You're All calling. Right. You know what? We're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to stay with this. OK. We're going to go up close, though. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah. I know what he's thinking. Of course, it's going to be the cards. Okay. I can't tell. Oh, that's Nothing, huh? Nothing. It's tough, right? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm curious where you guys were holding on this one. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you There's now. There's a little secret on that one. Yeah, there is, there is a secret to this. Colby was, was a little suspicious that he needed to hold differently and I think he was trying to solicit a response from Jermaine and myself. Now, of course, he's going to prove us wrong. Of course. I think he got wood. I think he did, yeah. Maybe if I had given him some in input, he might have made the shot now. <laughs> uh, Jeff, back to you. All right. Well, 
I am disappointed that I didn't get that clay pigeon, so I'm gonna go back to the clay pigeon with the pistol. If at first you don't succeed, try Damn try straight. Try. There you yeah, go. Damn straight. You all deserve a fair chance <laughs> at that one. When Jeff came around and chose those clays again, I was actually kind of happy that he chose to do that because I was just like him. I was pretty ticked off that I actually missed that target and I wanted to give it another go. Ah, damn it. Don't even know where that one went. No. All right, no pressure. <laughs> I get this. No pressure at all. And then when Colby missed, my attitude kind of changed, like, okay, this is actually going to be difficult again. So going out there a little bit of had a little bit of pressure. There it is. Shot. Nice. There it is. Nice. That gives well, you a G. Yeah, yeah. G, G, you. I know, I know. I'm bringing up the rear here. All right, 25 yards with the rifle. Uh, standing, no support. The bottle. Got it. Bottles it is. Nice. A tough target, too. I think Colby was seeing the strategy factor kicking in, and I think he wanted to up the ante on us. Since he saw we had a difficult time with those discs, he thought, let me try and turn the tables on them and see if I can get one and see if they'll miss. Oh, just low. Just oh. low. Just low. Nice. That puts me out. It's all on you, Jeff. Uh-oh. Shot. Thank you. I can hang with them for a while, but eventually their superior marksmanship is gonna is gonna shine, and that's what we saw today. These guys are just they're just better marksmen than I am. All right, well, since Jermaine doesn't have any letters and you have a G, I guess that means Big Jermaine took the victory here. Nice yeah. shoot. Thank you. Nice shoot, Jeff. Well, you too, man. Thank you, Colby. I enjoyed it today, guys. Very different with the Mossberg reaching the doors and then bringing both FNs over here and shooting some targets. Absolutely. Always fun. I think I definitely need to be working on my uh, pistol skills a little bit before <laughs> you guys come back. Thanks for coming to see me. Always All right? a pleasure. Thanks Thank you. again. Good to see you, Jermaine. Good to see you. Good to see you, Jeff. Adios. 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 Ah, you had to watch yourself with that.